Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon, the podcast where we talk about everything and anything Pokemon. And let me tell you, I apologized for uh, for not being present for the last month. I have been lost in the Hisuian region for way too long, but I have found my way back. I have crawled out of the deepest caverns and the iciest mountains just so that way I can talk about my overall final impressions of Pokemon Legends. Now, I can't truly recall, and maybe I should have listened to my previous episode just to be sure, if I have given any initial impressions about Pokemon Legends. I want to feel like I did, but regardless, I, now that I've played the entire game, I've completed my Pokedex, um, literally the only thing that I have left to do in the game is just perfecting the Pokedex pages. So, uh, you know, I, I've, I've finished all the side quests, I've got my Arceus, and, and I've, I feel like I am very confident in how I feel about the game. The good, the bad, the ugly, what I loved, what I hated, what I think they need to improve on, or what I want them to maybe carry over into a new game. I want to talk about all of it. Um, I do want to bring up a couple of things first before uh, anything, uh, before we do get into that discussion. Um, but like I said, I know I've been gone for a month. Uh, I've been playing Pokemon Legends nonstop. I almost wanted to do an episode giving my initial impressions, but I felt like I wanted to just play the whole thing so I can kind of give a proper overview of proper. Not, I don't want to call it a review, you know, podcast, a review episode, because I just don't think I have the structure in place to do a proper review. I just kind of want to have an open discussion about it. But like I said, I wanted to finish the game and be able to, you know, gather my thoughts and give my overall impressions of it um, before I talk about it. But first couple things house cleaning stuff to get out of the way uh we do have pokemon day coming up and i think there was some sort of poster or, or some sort of teaser that uh you know japan sent out uh through the pokemon company saying hey every day is going to be some sort of new announcement about something um i think what i'm starting on monday we had an announcement for pokemon masters ex where they were gonna release uh victory road or that was going to become available in the game which they have talked about under you know previous uh developer letters for quite a while now and uh, that they're going to release a sync pair. I think it's May, Cygnus Suit May and Latias, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I kind of feel like there should be more to it than that. Because I know last year they had, what, uh, N and Reshiram. And then there was Lily and Lunala and then Steve and Amenagris. I feel like there should be probably another couple pairs. Because then I think the year before that was uh, the Kanto Trio right uh blue green red i think so anyway regardless that was monday's announcement tuesday's announcement was hey in sword and shield we're doing max raid battles that are just going to be the canto starters so you can get your gigantamax venusaur blastoise and charizard and then i don't remember what the next several announcements were but there's something for home there's something for unite there's something for i think cafe remix it's it, this is kind of cool. This is like a little bit of a build up to Pokemon Day. It almost makes me want to. It almost makes me want to believe that they're kind of gonna announce something big in our yeah on Pokemon Day itself, which would be kind of weird because it is a Sunday that they're going to announce it if they do something. But usually they if they if there's anything over the weekend they kind of do it either the Friday or they wait till the following week. Um, regardless, I think. I, I feel like they're going to announce something major, whether it's a new generation or not. I kind of hope not. I, I, I know a lot of people are really harping for Gen 9, but I kind of want them to hold off on Gen 9 a little bit just because I'm, I'm already trying to... Um, I already invested so much time in Pokemon Legends that I, I want to kind of simmer with it for a little while. And then I, I do and I don't want to go back to Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl because to give you my honest overall thoughts on that game, it's it's a little disappointing, or at least maybe underwhelming is a better word for it. Um, it's very exhausting. I beat Cynthia, and then I was like, you know what? I don't want to do this game anymore. Like, I don't even want to complete the Pokedex. I don't even want to go to the underground. Like, I just, you know what? I got to this point. It took me a while, and it felt grueling because of all the trainer battles one after another. I just want to take a break from it, and then I just haven't gotten back to it since. So... Uh, you know, maybe I kind of want to revisit that over the summer leading up to whatever they're going to release in the fall, if they do release something in the fall. But 
you know, I, I because of the pandemic and how it pushed everything and, you know, who knows what development was like during that time. I think Gen 9 just needs to settle for a little bit longer or give more time to be developed a little bit longer. So that way we have a, a, a true, like, complete game. And I, I don't want to make it sound like I think every game out there is now incomplete. I just want to make sure that they don't feel rushed developing that game. Um, there's also rumors about, you know, some sort of battle stadium, which would be amazing if we get some sort of Pokemon stadium, but I don't want to like get my hopes up and I, and I don't mean to bring it up to get your hopes up either. I just think it's cool that we're getting some new Pokemon announcement of some kind, whether, you know, how big or how small it is. I think it's cool that Pokemon is always, you know, there, there's something that we can always like look forward to. And I think it's really fun that the, of how they're going about it. Um, and I think that's, oh, there's that. Uh, there's also, if you played in the international championships online for Sword and Shield, you can collect your shiny Galarian Articuno and, and shiny Galarian, uh, well, no, yeah, shiny Galarian Articuno uh, in the game for Sword and Shield. Uh, Zapdos should be coming up here pretty soon in a couple weeks since we're going into March. I think he's next. Uh, so don't forget to pick that up. And then the other major thing, I guess, to really talk about, but not go into a in-depth discussion because i don't have all the facts to it and you know i don't want it to feel like i'm gonna just promote one side of this argument but we did get the orlando regional uh championships or orlando regionals for uh, pokemon live events tcg and such uh that was canceled uh i think they made that announcement about almost a month ago at this point and it was extremely disappointing. I mean, I, I think everyone can agree that, that it sucks that they canceled an in-live event. A lot of people were looking forward to it. A lot of people were planning on attending, you know, getting, you know, plane tickets, hotels ready and all that stuff. Um, but to be fair, or at least to kind of give both sides here, what apparently had happened was that uh, with Pokemon Company, they were requiring... Uh, attendees to prove to prove that they were uh, they they had um, their vaccine their vaccinations so they had to show the card saying hey they have their two doses and they're good to go however florida policy or law i can't be too certain which if it's one or the other um, says you can't do that you're not allowed to require verification of vaccination um, on in your event now Pokemon Company is really, uh, uh, they're really adamant about keeping people safe. And not to say that Florida doesn't want to keep people safe, but I think for a big brand, a big franchise like them, you know, in the, let's say they do, they're like, okay, that's fine. We'll get rid of that requirement. And then someone gets sick at an event for Pokemon. Like that's on them, right? That's the Pokemon company. And now all of a sudden there's negative press review about them. And that would look bad as an image because like Pokemon's all about kids. Oh, Pokemon doesn't care about kids anymore. Like that would just be terrible. And I think Pokemon company stuck to their guns and said, no, we are not going to comply with this. We need proof of verification so that way we can assure the safety of everybody. And if you think about it, if this is what's going to keep you know, all areas or countries, whatever, um, states to, to, uh, have these live events, like kudos to Pokemon company for keeping it that way. Like they're, they're doing everything possible to make sure people are safe. Yes. It sounds extreme. Sure. We have to kind of distance ourselves, what is six feet apart, three feet apart, whatever, wear your mask. I, I get it. But for a company that's trying to uphold its brand, this was the right move for them. Sucks. It sucks for us that he live here in Florida. Uh, if I didn't reveal that before, I live in Florida. It sucks for us that live here in Florida. And I know a lot of us aren't going to be happy about it. And we're still going to be bummed about it no matter what. But I think the bigger uh, step or the bigger win here is that, you know, Pokemon Company is ensuring safety. So that way we can continue to have live events moving forward. Because if we messed up here, then they would probably cancel all other events and that's not something that everybody wants that that would be completely unfair so i know i felt very i, I know i'm sounding very one side of it um i know i'm i'm sounding like you know support pokemon company blah 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 and i and i get how that comes off but i hope just the concept of being safe is it, it kind of holds a priority in in your minds 
than, you know, being able to win a, uh, a best of three game or whatever. But that, that's my opinion. That's how I feel about it. Um, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll get something uh, in live events or something at least officially run by the Pokemon company. Although now that I think about it, now that I said that, I just remember that they did announce that all in-league um, premiere events cup events like challenges and things like that are canceled for the rest of the 2022 season so local shops cannot hold basically officially sanctioned pokemon play events if they do if they hold any sort of event that's on them it's not on the pokemon company and the tournament organizer has to say that this is not an official sanctioned event that is a formality that has to be said to the attendees um that is a rule set by the pokemon company uh, that's I I, sh I should know that because that is I, I got an email saying that's what I needed to say because I'm a tournament organizer for my local shop so you know just wanted to throw it out there making sure people are not confused about it shops cannot hold official sanction play Pokemon events me basically mean you're not earning championship points and things like that all right now that I drink some of my energy drink there um, I believe we are ready to talk about Pokemon Legends. Um, if it wasn't hinted already to you before, I love this game so much more than I think I ever could have anticipated. Like, I knew going into the game with the trailers and everything, I was kind of, like, timid. I was like, okay, this looks kind of neat. This looks interesting. I'm not sure how it's going to play out. Open world-ish type of game. I feel like my anxiety is going through the roof already because I have to complete this and that and that before I move any further. Like, that's how I am with... That's why I don't play a lot of open world games for that reason of being... Like, it sounds dumb, right? Like, oh, you have all these options doing the game. Yes, but my OCD says I need to do this, 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 this before I can do that. To give you a perfect example, Horizon Zero Dawn, when I played that game for my first time, there's a point in the game where you are... You have to make your way to this, like, little... This little city that has like a, a wall built to kind of keep this division in in the in the uh area that you're in and there's like a, a robot uh i don't know what to call it it's like almost look like stack attacker i guess that's the only way i can think of it um attacks the city and you have to take it down so that's that mission right even like even before going to that city to get that mission I completed the entire map, the entire area, went to the other towns, talked to the other people, completed all of the dens, completed all of the artifacts and, and all that stuff. And then once I was done with all that, then I got to that city and then I completed the rest of the main story. That's how I am with open world games. It's very uh, frustrating, but it's also enjoying at the same time. But I, it's a time commitment. And so that's why I was a little concerned with this. I was like, oh, man, this is going to be a serious like time commitment. Like if I'm going to complete this game in its entirety, I need to be able to sit down and just focus in on it. So uh, going in, like I said, uh, I was a little iffy. Like I knew I would still buy it and like it in general just because it's a new Pokemon game. Uh, but, you know, coming from Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, I was like, uh, you know, this, it may be just as underwhelming as that game was. So then as soon as I booted up the game, I think I was immediately hooked to the concept of what they were trying to do. And I think that like, that was almost like the obvious plan. Oh, by the way, spoilers by, I'm just going to say that right now, spoilers for the almost the entirety of Pokemon Legends Arceus. So if you don't want to hear spoilers, don't listen to this episode yet. If you've already beaten the game and you want to and you already know about the spoilers, then hey, by all means stick around and listen. But I just want to warn everybody, I will, you know, talk about spoilery things in this episode. I don't have like a certain order of like, oh, I'm gonna mention all of this stuff. It's just that it's hard for me to talk about some of the game without talking about the spoiler stuff, especially like the, the certain Pokemon and like the quote unquote final uh, ending of the game, things like that. So warning you right now. But anyway, kind of the first spoiler thing is that you're sent um, or you're you're led to believe that you're sent back in time by Arceus and that he sees this potential in you to be something great and he gives you the task of seeking all the pokemon so that you can go then and seek him out kind of 
proving yourself to him for whatever reason. It's, it's not really clear why the context, like what the context is, but it that's the whole premise and that's the beginning of the game. The first thing I guess I will talk about is the story itself. The story is very much confusing, not like in a bad way, but it's almost like, why did they make certain decisions and not follow through with it? So the storyline from the beginning, like it's kind of, it, it like piques your interest is like, oh, back in time. Oh, we I get, you know, we come from a different region, but in, from a different time period. And then it kind of flatlines already. And it's like your basic tropey Pokemon stuff, right? You go help people with Pokemon uh, errands. You catch Pokemon. You complete these um, uh, trials, so to speak, where basically you're... What, what has happened is that this space-time distortion thing going on has um, created these energy blasts that have hit certain Pokemon, these noble Pokemon, so to speak, in the Hisuian region. And so you're going out uh, on this adventure to quell them, to, to calm them down. Uh, the person that finds you uh, being stranded at the beginning of the game uh, has like some hesitancy towards you. Uh, the commander of the whole thing is like, hey, you listen, you could be useful, but just know that I don't completely trust you uh, with all this stuff going on. It's kind of weird timing that, you know, you just showed up and then this is happening. So there are a lot of trust issues there, especially with the town. But I think what's kind of cool is that you're trying to integrate Pokemon into the town because they feared Pokemon. And the commander later on reveals that his hometown was attacked by giant Pokemon or like an alpha Pokemon or something like that. And that's why they were forced out of there. And they, um, they started to reside in uh, Jubilee Village in, in the Hisuian region. And so everyone in that town is, is afraid of Pokemon, don't want to do anything. But these side quests that you go through kind of helps you prove to them that Pokemon and people can coexist. And so, you know... They'll be like, oh, I've, I need like a Pokemon that can plow through the ground and help us plant these seeds. And they'll be like, oh, I, need, I could use a ground type Pokemon. And so you give them a ground type Pokemon and you'll see your ground type Pokemon just physically present there in the overworld, just helping out the town. Like you don't actually physically see them, but they're just standing there with the next person. It's like, oh, that's kind of cool. And then they'll ask for a water Pokemon. So you give them a water Pokemon and you can see them there. So it's neat that you're assisting this village through these requests to show them that pokemon aren't just scary creatures that you know that you can have pokemon as your partners um for those of you that have played it digimon world it's it's a similar concept with digimon world you go out and you um complete like you battle these giant digimon and they come and help out the town and then they help prosper the town and it increases like the activity there and things like that similar thing with pokemon legends so i i think that whole concept is really neat but it kind of is like this it's not the same side quest over and over again but you go into that routine of okay commander what's what am i supposed to do quell that pokemon got it all right done what's next oh i got another summit go quell that pokemon okay done what's next go ahead and you know take care of that pokemon like it was just very basic until we get to area four where there's a huge twist in the game. Maybe not that significant, but it was very cool to see. You're confronted by uh, Ingo? I think it's Ingo. It's in it's either Ingo or Emmett. I believe it's Ingo, but um, it's one of the uh, subway train uh, Pokemon, uh, uh, Pokemon trainers from Black and White. And he apparently is in a similar situation as you. He remembers being from somewhere else and having these memories of Pokemon and people coexisting. And then you go on this sort of walk, uh, uh, this sort of mission on a game where you're just walking through a cave, you're trying to get to from point A to point B. And he kind of, it's an exposition dump where he talks about how he was also stranded and that he was found. He doesn't have any memories really. And he starts to remember stuff being around you. Like being around you helps him like jog his memory of like, Ah, uh, yes, I remember something about another partner that I had. And I remember this this trainer and I remember being in this area. And like, it was just very, like, interesting all of a sudden. Like, the story just, like, spiked up and I was like, oh, man, this is really cool. And it's kind of revealed that you're not necessarily from a different time period. You're just from a different 
multiverse altogether. I'm just going to use that word multiverse because it's very popular right now. And that's probably the best way to think about it. You're in like in another dimension. It's not your timeline that you went back in time with. It's just another point in space and time. Um, so it, it kind of like it makes a little bit more sense because you see a lot of these trainers in the in the village and in the other areas that resemble a lot of the trainers that you're used to, like Agatha and and um, and Volkner and uh, Can Candace and and everyone, and you would think, oh, like they're just your ancestors, but no, they're just a different variation of them in in this particular area, in this particular dimension, in this multiverse or whatever. And so it, that concept even gets cooler. And I was like, oh, where is this going to go now? But now we're back to kind of square one, where all of a sudden uh, you are no longer trusted. Um, I think what happened, if I recall correctly, and I don't think I will, uh, you were connected with uh, the the god of, not the god of Pokemon, but with the Alga or Palkia being released and and unleashing like uh all this monstrosity in the region and so you you've been kind of banned from jubilife village and you kind of have to work your way up and the ending kind of goes where you just catch the 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 legendary pokemon at the end i think you first catch whatever your box what, what uh, is it dialga no it depends on who you i'm sorry it depends on who you choose to venture with because you have the clan clan leaders irida and adaman and so depending on who determines like who you catch in regular form versus who you catch in your in their origin form but regardless you catch one of them and then you're tasked to go out and catch the other one because the other one gets released and then you kind of build like the first cherish ball almost it's like a completely red pokeball just i think they call it the ancient ball or whatever and, and that's pretty much it that that is the main story because then after that that's where the credits roll and you go oh uh i guess that was neat because it was very like you, you threw it in this whole multiverse idea but then you didn't do anything with it and after the credits roll, right, you go back into your village in your little room and then you're automatically tasked then with uh, having to catch legendary Pokemon and mythical Pokemon because there's something else. Like you're one of the people you meet is Volo and he tries to like uncover the secrets of like all this stuff and he knows about Arceus and he knows how this was like the god of Pokemon and so he wants your help to try to find it. But what's really weird is that like the post-game stuff is exciting it almost makes you want to believe that that's supposed to be the actual ending of the game where you go out and do all these catching of the mythicals and legendaries because then the ultimate last thing you do it's revealed that volo kind of is has been working with giratina to distort the worlds so that way you can find arceus or that he can find arceus but, you know, he fails. He never actually finds Arceus. But you end up battling him to try to calm him down, to try to take him down and tell him, like, this is a stupid, crazy idea. And what's so weird is that you battle eight Pokemon in this final, in, in, in that final part of the game. So he has his regular six, but then all of a sudden a Giratina comes out and you have to fight Giratina. But once you battle the first form of Giratina, he transforms into his second form, his other form. And now you have to battle that Giratina all over again. So the story is a really crazy wild ride. Like, I don't think the story is the highlight of this game. It could have been. There was a lot of potential behind it. But they never fully executed what I think people would have wanted out of the storyline. So the storyline is just okay. It does have high points, which is really engaging, but for the most part, it's pretty standard and tropey, and, you know, it's nothing to write home about. So that's how I feel about the story. Um, let's talk about the Hisuian Pokemon. I I think the Hisuian Pokemon are pretty cool. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Sneasler. Uh, I'm okay with Enamorous, which is one of the... Uh, genie quote-unquote genie pokemon i don't know if that's like the actual 
legit nickname for them but you know what the thunderous landerous and tornadus and all the like those three enamorous is one of those um design is pretty cool but catching enamorous was so incredibly frustrating like the other three are fine you can throw some like apper apricorn ball not apricorn balls but like yeah apricorns or the sticky goo webs or whatever and then like knock them out and then throw the ultra ball to catch them that, that was fine but enamorous was frustrating because like you could get somewhat close and she would spot you and then all of a sudden run away and then when you try to get closer with using weird air or bravery or whatever then all of a sudden she throws like these tornadoes up and it's just it was a hot mess not a fan of catching them but i think the historian pokemon designs are are fairly neat there's just some that unfortunately didn't I don't know if their if their whole design planning to them was fully executed. So, for example, Electrode, Hisuian Voltorb to Hisuian Electrode was kind of disappointing. It's a wooden Pokeball. I get it for Voltorb. That's fine. But Electrode, it's just a wooden Electrode. And I kind of wanted to expect a little bit more than just a wooden Electrode with sharper eyes, so to speak. Um, Sneasler, very creepy, weird-looking Pokemon not a fan of Sneasler. Uh, it's one of your quote-unquote ride Pokemon, but it's just very creepy, like almost looks like Slenderman kind of vibes a little bit. Not a fan of that. Um, the starters, uh, their designs are, I think, off-putting for a lot of major fans of the starter Pokemon. I know a lot of people have complaints about Typhlosion. I think the typing is still really cool. I get where the, the memes and the jokes are coming from for how it looks, but I don't think that justifies, like, how, like, quote, I, I keep using quote, unquote, how um, bad the Pokemon may be. I don't think it is. I think it's fine. I don't think Samurott got much of a great, de, like, redesign. It just looks like a darker, edgier Samurott. Decidueye got a complete overhaul from what it looks like, but I think it's a pretty neat bird. I think it's got a neat kind of background to it, being a grass-finding Pokemon. It's signature move, triple arrows. Uh, it's a pretty cool look. Um, I don't have any problem with that. Uh, but I, I think my favorite Hisuian Pokemon would have to be Overquill. One, primarily because of the name, but two, also because of its like enlarged size and like all these spikes coming out. Overquill just has that good like ring to it, and it just makes sense. And I just think it's such an awesome looking Pokemon. So hats off to, to the person that designed Overquill. They did a stellar job. Ursa Luna is another great Pokemon. Very complicated to find out what its evolution is. But um, once you get it, it is pretty cool to have. And it is a neat Pokemon to ride on. Um, let's see. What else is there? Basket Legion is fine. Hisuian Bravery is fine. Um, I'm trying to think what else. There's not a whole lot of new ones. Hisuian Gumi, uh, Gudra, and... well. Gumi, Sligu, and Gudra are pretty neat. They're just okay. Like the only thought, the only one that stuck out to me was Overquill, but I don't, I can't think of another Pokemon design that I could go completely bonkers for. Uh, Cleaver was interesting, but I think the more I looked at a design, the less I was interested in. Avalug, I don't think was all that great. Lilligant, I don't think was all that great. Like they're fine, but you know they're not thing to write home about. Hisu and Growlithe was cool. Very much disappointed with Hisu and Arcanine. I expected more than just like an, an Arcanine that looks like it has like the front of Sogaleo's uh, face attached to it. Um, I was hoping for something a little bit more grand. Uh, Zorua and Zoroark are probably like definitely in the top five of favorites for Hisu and uh, Region Pokemon. And then there's Weirdeer, which, you know, I like that Stantler got an evolution. I'm all for it. But the, I don't know. I think they could have gone either. They could have added a lot more Hisuian designs or they could have been a little bit more extreme with their designs or, or kind of take risk with a lot of their designs. Because again, the, the Electro, the Arcanine and the, I think it's the, even the Braviary, they're just, okay, you just made a different color palette and you added like one physical feature and that's pretty much it. So, um, they are what they are. 
I, I don't think anyone can get that excited about Hisuian Pokemon. I, I'm sure everyone has like their one favorite Hisuian, and that's fine. Mine was Overquill. And I know people really love the the new Gudra being definitely, a, I think it's Dragonsteel. And then Zorark. Is, is Zorark has always been a favorite for a lot of fans. So having a Hisuian version just makes it even cooler, especially with its design and being a normal ghost typing. Um, but I, I would have liked to have seen them take more risks with Pokemon. Now, let's talk about, I guess, the overall gameplay. Man, uh, Game Freak, I feel like, really shot themselves in the foot with this game. Mainly because I think if they were to go to Gen 9, it is going to be extremely difficult if they don't carry over a lot of the same gameplay mechanics. So, for example, the ability to throw pokeballs and get into a battle almost simultaneously just feels great like you don't have to force yourself into wild battles with these pokemon you can sneak up on them and throw a pokeball and be able to capture them could you still go into a battle absolutely but even then you still don't even have to actually fight you could just throw a pokeball in that battle phase and capture them there are resources to collect that if you throw your Pokeball at them, um, your Pokemon at them, their Pokemon collects the resources for you. And I've been in several situations where I threw one Pokemon at one resource, switch to another Pokemon to throw at another resource, threw a Pokeball at a Pokemon I wanted to get, and then got into a battle with a third Pokemon almost like just simultaneously. And it was so fluid. It was so smooth that it was it just felt so good and so cool to do. And if they don't carry that into another game, I can see a lot of people just falling off playing Pokemon. Maybe I'm exaggerating that part because I think you could like slap a Pikachu on anything and it'll definitely sell. But it's just going to be very, very difficult to go back to the old routine of things. I went back to Sword and Shield a little bit to kind of get a feel for how it was. And it was... It, it didn't feel bad, but it just... I missed the freedom. I missed the freedom just being able to run around and just go into any wild Pokemon that I wanted to or catch anything that I wanted to. Uh, I don't, you know, Sword and Shield and all the other games are just very much on the rail. It's like, here's point A to point B, do this, 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 and that's it. I, I, I like the freedom to it, and I hope they carry that moving forward. Am I going to hate Gen 9 if it doesn't? I I'm, I personally don't think I'm going to. Like, I still love Pokemon. I still love the game. I didn't fall in love with the game because of the gameplay mechanics behind it. I fell in love because of the concept behind it. So it's not going to be like a make or break for it, uh, at least for me. But I can see for other people that that can be the make or break for it um, for Gen 9. So I am very curious what Game Freak has planned moving forward. Because a lot of those features are very much loved. Ever, like you talk to any pokemon legends fan or maybe 90 percent of pokemon legends fans they love what you're capable of doing in this game um i'm glad that they kept ride pokemon in here i love the fact and this is probably my favorite feature and not a lot of people talk about it and you know i get it because firsthand this game is not a competitive game it is not for competitive battling so people that only go to pokemon for competitive battling are going to be very very disappointed with this game i feel like like yes they added agile style and strong style but it's almost irrelevant to this entire game regardless what i love about this game one of the many features i love about this game is that you no longer have to worry about going to a move tutor to relearn a move You've always had, up until this point, Pokemon with only four moves. And whenever they leveled up and they learned their fifth, sixth, seventh move, you had to delete one of the moves that was in the slot. And it sucked because what if you wanted something really good that you were using for a while or maybe it would help you catch Pokemon, but you know you need this other new attack like Hydro Pump or Hyper Beam and you got to keep it in your roster. You got to get rid of a move and then you would have to find some means necessary to get that move back if you wanted to reteach it to your Pokemon. That's no longer an issue, or at least for this game, it wasn't. Because what happens is you can collect all of these moves. It'll keep it in its so-called memory, and you can switch out the moves whenever you feel like it. Like for uh, my first experience with this, I my, it was my Oshawa. I had only Tackle and Aqua Jet, and I went to the Move Tutor, and I and I paid the five hundred dollars to say, "Hey, teach my Oshawa Aerial Ace." want an aerial ace like that way i can battle grass pokemon 
I go into a battle of a grass Pokemon. I'm looking for Air Aerial Ace. Nope, I only see Tackle and Aqua Jet. I'm like, what the heck? What happened? I paid 500. Where's the attack? So after the battle, I went into looking at my Pokemon summary, and it says there's an option to change moves. Not to check moves, but to change moves. I went in there, and lo and behold, Aerial Ace is just sitting on the left-hand side of the list as a move that I can add on to my, my, move of four, my list of four. So I swapped it over, confirmed it, and boof, there you go. Now I've added Aerial Ace. And once it's full, you can, you can swap out the moves whenever you feel like it. I think that is incredible. I think that's great. I hope that they keep that feature because I know I would definitely miss it if it wasn't in the next generation game. The other thing that I also can bring up, which is something that I didn't think was a necessity, and it's still not really a necessity, but it just feels nice because, again, you have more control in this game than I think any other Pokemon game has ever given you. But when a Pokemon is ready to evolve, it doesn't automatically evolve. You actually have to choose it to evolve. When my Oshawa got to, what, level 16 or 17 or whatever, it came with, like, a glowing, like, uh, statement on it that says, can evolve, and then you can press X to evolve it. I can, you can choose when you want to evolve these Pokemon, which some, for some people is like, why, why would I want to do that? Well, certain Pokemon learn certain moves at an earlier level than if they were in evolved forms. Then you could be like, oh, why can't you just press B? Sure, you can, but I just feel like it's a little bit more personable. I think that's the word, right? Personable for you to say, hey, Oshawa, are you ready to evolve? I think it, you can do it. You can, you're getting stronger, and then you just let it evolve. I think there's just something more meaningful to that than just stopping it from its evolution. Because that almost seems counter, like, uh, not counterintuitive, but, right, the whole idea is you, you build this bond with this trainer, and that you're encouraging it to win, you're, you're trying to support it all you can, and so when it evolves and you stop the evolution, that almost feels like, well, slap in the face, you can't evolve right now. Like, I think the more ideal route is you choose when you want to evolve it, when you think it's ready. I think that has a deeper attachment to it than what we what we originally had. So that's a very cool feature that I want them to make sure they continue moving forward uh, in the future games. Um, I'm trying to think what else is there. The crafting is fine. I don't think I use the crafting as much as I probably should. And that's only because I, I fear for lacking resources. And I've gone into that situation where I've ran out of a lot of resources and I can't make the best of the Pokeballs that they have to offer. So I just rather purchase them. Um, so I think there's some refinement they can use with the crafting, assuming that they move with crafting moving forward um what else is there like the areas are fine they're nothing really fancy they're nothing extravagant i think they're kind of like your standard maps with some neat features here and there one of them's got a volcano which is a pretty interesting area because it's got vastly different pokemon than you would find in the main part of that area um so you know they they could probably do a little bit more touch up on those uh the overall look of the game i know people kind of down it for its graphics i don't know if it's so much of a graphics thing or if it's more of like an art decision because it has that very much reminiscent of like japanese art style to it and i think that was maybe the route they were going for at least that's my assumption which is why the game looks the way it does i don't think it really has anything to do with bad graphics um the interactions with the pokemon are great uh just them being in the overwild reacting to you whether they want to run away from you be aggressive just shooting you with water poles or psychic or whatever i think that's really really awesome um the uh i'm trying to think what else i want to oh when you're battling noble pokemon it was literally the most disappointing thing ever um the first three no the first four are very meaningless like, it doesn't feel good to beat them. It's like, oh, cool, I beat them. That's it. All right, moving on. Like, the only one that I liked was the fifth one. I believe it's the fifth one with um, Avalug. That one felt good because it actually kind of scaffolded its difficulty. And it was just much 
easier to learn i guess but it was just more exciting to play it as opposed to the other ones where it's just like oh let me throw the the bombs over and over again and then it's over in like two minutes have was the only one that i had to send out a pokemon to battle against it which i don't know if it really made that much of a significant difference but the other ones i didn't really have an app option or if i did it was gone in two seconds so you know that it would that part was disappointing arceus was probably the most difficult one and maybe it was meant to be but that one was very grueling like there was just a lot to dodge and i died multiple times and luckily although probably not the most ideal way of going about it luckily you could restart your progress um either from the very beginning or wherever you left off which of course i always kept picking where i left off it made things a lot easier um completing the pokedex is kind of fun i like the idea that this game took the approach of you are you are literally helping out the professor complete this region's first pokedex and that you have to collect the data and you have to reach level 10 for the pokemon uh, of the pokemon or the pokedex page for that pokemon uh to be able to get its like stats and like its pokedex description and what foods it's eat and things like that um but you could perfect the pokedex page which means you completed all the objectives that are needed for that pokemon and i think that's where it hits for the collectors like for me being ocd and be like oh i need to complete this i i like completing it they're sort of meaningless tasks you have to watch them do a move like 15 times watch them do an agile move 40 times and a lot of them do get very very tedious but i like seeing a checklist and i like that i'm working towards a goal and that i'm going to be using all these different pokemon and i get to fight all these different pokemon and when i'm fighting pokemon it also counts towards their pokedex page because some of them are like you know you have to defeat this pokemon in the wild 15 times or whatever um so it feels really good to be able to complete your pokedex and one thing that i noticed i don't know if maybe it was a fluke but i'm pretty sure this is accurate someone can fact check me on this and it is probably very frustrating to people although for me i get it and i like it and i enjoy the concept even though i do find it frustrating sometimes when you are completing these objectives it does say that you have to see your pokemon like you have to observe your pokemon use this move 15 times being that if you're in a battle you have the ability to roam around you can run around your pokemon you can go in between the pokemon and so you could literally be walking off and not look at your pokemon and do something else off to the side while your pokemon finishes an attack if you're screen slash character does not face the pokemon does not actually see the attack it does not count on your pokedex page as like you watched it and i thought that was like the most interesting thing that it, you literally have to observe it in order for it to count um i think that's just kind of like a neat uh, uh requirement i guess uh but it makes sense like you if you didn't see it you didn't see it so it shouldn't count towards your thing um i'm trying to think what else is there to bring up i know there's like there's a lot more that i can probably um, rant about or praise about but i just think the where it lies like the the highlight of the game is in the quote-unquote open world areas where you can have this freedom of running around and collecting pokemon at your own leisure how uh, however you want to how often you want to I think that's where the game shines and it almost feels like this game was sort of a like a test to see what features people like and didn't like and so that way they can either implement that or re remove that from whatever game they're going to build in the future so overall thoughts impressions that was pretty much it i definitely would give this game an a plus just because of how addicting it can be I still have not stopped playing Pokemon Legends. I want to perfect every page. So that's my main goal right now. Um, probably doing one or two Pokemon a day or every other day just to kind of... That way I don't get completely burned out. Um, but I definitely highly recommend people going out and, and buying this game and trying it out for themselves. I think it's completely worth it. If you're into Pokemon for a competitive battling though... I don't this this is definitely not the game for you I don't think this is something that you want to pursue so you may just want to watch like twitch viewers like twitch um, streamers and see what the gameplay is like before you decide you want to delve into it but yeah that's my overall thoughts on the game that's how I feel about it 
uh, let me know down in the comments section or write me an email or reach me on my social media to let me know how you feel about the game. Um, I, I think it's a blast and I hope you guys enjoy it too. And yeah, that wraps it up. So let's go ahead and wrap up this episode of a course as we usually do with the Pokedex trivia, where I read to you a Pokedex entry for a Pokemon from any of its Pokemon games that it's been in. I do not reveal what Pokemon game it's from, but I do give some hints as to what uh, the Pokemon could possibly be. So make sure you listen very carefully. And I made this one a sort of a special one. So hopefully you guys will get this. All right, without further ado, here is the Pokedex entry for this episode's Pokemon. Its lance-like spikes and savage temperament have earned it the nickname Seafiend. It slurps up poison to nourish itself. I think those that know it definitely will know it immediately, especially if you paid attention to it. Um, I can tell you that this is a dual-type Pokemon. It has the in, uh, hidden ability Intimidate, which is kind of interesting for a uh, hidden ability. I feel like that should have been just like a regular ability, but maybe not. Um, let's see. In order to evolve into this Pokemon, so this is a two-stage Pokemon. This is the second, the stage one, so to speak, the evolution that we're talking about. You have to observe it using a particular attack a number of times now that if that doesn't give it away then i don't know what will uh i'm trying to think if there's anything else i can give you um it does its standard abilities are poison point and swift swim and i think from that you're pretty much good to go because if i reveal anything else it's just going to give away what the pokemon is and if you haven't figured it out maybe you haven't been listening or paying attention or you just didn't complete that pokemon page that uh, pokedex page for it so yes this is a pokemon that is only specific to pokemon legends again the pokedex says it's lance like spikes and savage temperament have earned it the nickname sea fiend it slurps up poison to nourish itself lock in your answer here we go it is none other than number nine zero four overquill such a cool design and i just noticed that there's a letter q on its tail and that's a sort of interesting take to exp how do you explain that in the natural world regardless man this mean looking pokemon is it, it almost reminds me of um that smash brothers item that turns into a spike ball that's exactly what this is uh i don't think there's any trivia let me check here really quick everything i i information wise i get from bulbapedia so that's what i'm checking up oh, there is one bullet point of uh trivia here overquill and its pre-evolution hisuian quillfish were first hinted in pokemon brilliant diamond and shining pearl before its official reveal in pokemon legends arceus where they were mentioned in a book in the canalave yeah, kind of kind of live library. And that is true. Um, I do remember Serebii pointing out that it was like a new entry in that library that wasn't there in the original game. And it talks about how you uh, there's like a sailor that went uh, on a on a voyage with a uh, I think it was a float soul and over quill. And well, it doesn't say over quill, but it says something that looks like quill fish and a uh, man tyke and this is a spoiler for the game but essentially that's what you need to have in your pokemon party in pokemon legends to go find uh manaphy and fion so uh i thought that was kind of like a neat little callback to pokemon brilliant diamond shining pro and obviously it was intentional so that way it kind of gives a hint as to what you do um with that particular mission um but yeah that's pretty much it uh, cool Pokemon, cool design. Even the color tone is pretty cool. And being a Poison Dark makes me kind of curious how to use it in battle. I think that's something I want to invest in and, and take a look at. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up this episode. Thank you guys so much for being so patient with me over the past few weeks. Um, I appreciate every single one of you. The the plays or the listens that I guess I've been getting on the past several episodes. I've been 
very overwhelming, more than I could ever expect. Um, so I do appreciate every single one of you tuning in for this. Uh, if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at SpartanStrike07. Uh, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple iTunes or wherever you normally listen uh, to your podcast, you can listen to the you, you can listen to it through YouTube, uh, which is at Spartan Strike, which is also SpartanStrike07. That's the name of the channel. Um, all for it. All right now, it is. It's just my uh, old old Pokemon openings. And also uh, just these episodes that are being uploaded. Um, I may go back to Pokemon openings in the future. We'll see. But in the case that you just want to follow the channel and want to listen to your episodes that way, you can. Uh, and I'm trying to think, oh, if you want to write to me an email, feedback, otherwise, or maybe you, you want to collaborate, possibly. Uh, you know, let's talk. Let's discuss it. Or if you want to give me your opinions on anything I just said, you can email me at SpartanStrike07 at gmail.com. Uh, and, you know, I can share that on the next episode. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I'm hoping my next episode uh, is going to be about my experience with Pokemon Go Johto Tour because that is this weekend and I'm looking forward to it. I've cleared a lot of space in my Pokemon bag so that way I don't have to worry about buying more space although I may have to buy item upgrades. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's that's the next kind of biggie in the way of Pokemon uh, leading up to Pokemon Day and who knows if we have some big new announcements to talk about which I, I think it's almost safe to assume that we will. Um, that would also be for the next episode. So we'll see where I can balance out the two the two parts. Without further ado, thank you again for like the thousandth time. And I look forward to talking to you guys next time where we can talk about everything and anything Pokemon.